A voice so hilarious it cost this actor a role in the Star Wars universe? Turning down a sought-after superhero role because of a potential nickname? Those in Hollywood can be cold, cruel, unforgiving, and sometimes tardy. Olivia Wilde has enjoyed a rocket ride to the A-list in the last few years, with roles in critically acclaimed features like A Vigilante and Richard Jewell, and praise for her directorial debut, Booksmart. However, she's also put in the hours auditioning for, and sometimes failing to land, roles. One notable loss for Wilde was the part that eventually made Margot Robbie a star in Martin Scorsese's Wolf of Wall Street. Howard Stern asked Wilde in a 2016 interview if she had ever lost a part because the producers considered her too attractive. Wilde replied that she recalled being turned down for a movie because she was too sophisticated. She recalled, I was like, oh, that sounds nice, and then I found out later that they actually said old. I want to make a translation sheet for Hollywood that's all the feedback your agents give you and what it really means. Oh. Now I feel foolish. Wilde later revealed that the film in question was The Wolf of Wall Street, and she was 29 at the time of the audition. She went on to note that the experience ultimately proved beneficial, as it forged a connection with Scorsese that led her to joining the cast of the short-lived HBO series Vinyl. She added, It shows that if you don't get something, job interview, whatever you do for a living, it might lead to something else. Why'd you do that? I was trying to see if you have the tingle thing. I have the tingle thing, just not for bread. The triumphant return of Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man in Spider-Man No Way Home had many fans wondering why he had left the Marvel film series in the first place. It was likely a combination of reasons, from the box office stumble between his two Spidey films to a growing disenchantment with the portrayal of the character. However, the most petty reason playing a part in his dismissal was revealed as part of the infamous 2014 hack of internal emails at Sony. Garfield was slated to appear at a Sony event in Rio de Janeiro in 2014. Then studio chairman Kazuo Harai planned to announce him as the star of The Amazing Spider-Man 3, slated for 2016. But while Garfield came to Rio, he did not show up to the event, citing fatigue from jet lag. This forced Harai to scramble at the last minute, scrapping the announcement. The chairman's displeasure was evident in his leaked email. Here we are, about one hour away from our gala event, and Andrew decides he doesn't want to attend. He has a rather scruffy beard, and he just wants to be left alone. Though never confirmed as the specific reason for his dismissal, Garfield and Sony parted ways soon after the Rio event dust-up. Witcher star Henry Cavill has made it no secret that he'd like to drive the Aston Martin as James Bond now that Daniel Craig has retired as 007. In 2020, he told GQ that if the James Bond producers were interested in him joining the legacy, he would happily jump at the opportunity. However, Cavill already made strides to play the iconic secret agent back in 2006, and according to an interview with Men's Health US in 2021, he received feedback that might leave most actors feeling shaken, not stirred. In the Men's Health article, Cavill said he auditioned for Bond prior to Daniel Craig's assumption of the role in 2006's Casino Royale. Cavill said he was one of the finalists for the role. That is, until the screen test required him to wear only a bath towel. He recalled, I remember the director, Martin Campbell, saying, looking a little chubby there, Henry. Though Cavill endured teasing for his weight as a kid, he took the comments in stride. He said, I'm glad Martin said something because I respond well to truth. It helps me get better. The truth about you is beautiful. As fans of the 2005 dystopian flick V for Vendetta know, British actor James Purefoy was initially cast as the titular anti-hero who terrorizes a totalitarian future England government. He departed the role after three weeks of filming, reportedly due to difficulties in wearing the character's signature Guy Fawkes mask. Director James McTeague alluded to this account in an interview with CBR.com, saying, It's hard putting anyone in a mask. Actor Hugo Weaving, who replaced Purefoy as V, also hinted that the mask was the source of the problem in an interview. He said, I was very surprised to get the call saying, well, look, we've actually sort of parted ways with James Purefoy. It was to do with animating the mask, and they didn't think it was working. However, Purefoy appeared to counter that account in an interview with Total Film, saying, The only rumor I can scotch is that if anybody thinks I was too to wear a mask, they're completely wrong. Purefoy also laughed off rumors that producer Joel Silver dismissed him because his voice lacked menace, claiming that they really just parted ways because of creative differences. Whose version is correct? It remains a subject for debate. 
Auditions can be a difficult process for any performer. If they fail to book the part, they or their representation are sometimes told by the filmmakers why they weren't right for the role. For many actors, this can be a swift kick in the ego and a real damper to the confidence necessary to work in that field. However, any actor should take comfort in the fact that even some of the greatest in their business were dismissed for petty, even downright rude reasons. Case in point, Oscar winner Meryl Streep, arguably one of the greatest actors in the history of film and certainly the most awarded. In 1976, she was invited to audition for producer Dino De Laurentiis' high-profile remake of King Kong. But as she explained, during a 2015 appearance on The Graham Norton Show, her audition ended almost as quickly as it had begun. De Laurentiis' son asked her to try out for the role of Dwan, eventually played by Jessica Lange. However, upon arriving at the production office, Streep quickly found out that she was not what the veteran producer had in mind. The father said to his son, in Italian, because I understand Italian, he said, Che brutta, you know, why do you bring me this ugly thing? Ultimately, Streep had the last laugh. Kong was a box office flop while she appeared in The Deer Hunter in 1978, netting her first of 21 Oscar nominations. I'm sorry I'm not beautiful enough to be in King Kong. <laughs> Although Paul Bettany is best known for films like The Da Vinci Code and Solo A Star Wars Story, and for playing the MCU's Vision, he was primarily an English stage and television actor until 2001. During that period, he came under consideration to play Emmett, Reese Witherspoon's romantic interest in Legally Blonde. In a 2021 oral history of Legally Blonde in the New York Times, casting director Joseph Middleton said there was one fatal flaw in casting Bettany as Emmett. I loved Paul Bettany for the Emmett role, but he was British and the producers felt like it needed to be a real American. Tell me you're joking. Though Bettany didn't get to be part of an enduring fan favorite, he did land the role of Geoffrey Chaucer in A Knight's Tale that same year. That led to a successful career in Hollywood via films like A Beautiful Mind and Master and Commander The Far Side of the World. Back in 2000, Russell Crowe was one of the biggest stars in Hollywood, with an Oscar for Gladiator and hit films like LA Confidential and The Insider. The X-Men were also on their way to grace the silver screen for the first time, and fan-favorite character Wolverine was perhaps the most in-demand role in town. It seems only natural, then, that the irritable, rage-filled mutant and the actor known for playing irascible, rage-filled characters would intersect. But ultimately, the Australian turned it down for very curious reasons. While appearing on the daytime television program Fitzy and Whippa in 2017, Crow was asked why he turned down the role of Wolverine in X-Men. The actor was director Brian Singer's first choice to play the iconic Marvel mutant, but as Crow explained, he'd already had his fill of wolves while on Gladiator. If you remember, Maximus has a wolf at the center of his cuirass, and he has a wolf as his companion, which I thought was going to be a bigger deal at the time. So I said no, because I didn't want to be wolfy like Mr. Wolf. As Crow later found out, Gladiator director Ridley Scott trimmed much of said wolf referencing from the final cut, but something good did come out of Crow's loss. He suggested fellow Aussie actor Hugh Jackman for the role of Wolverine, helping his countrymen create one of the great iconic roles of the 21st century. I am Spider-Man, and I've really messed up. Wait, you're, you're being serious right now? Mm-hmm. You're not joking with me? Like, you're 100% serious because it's not funny. Actor Tom Holland recalled an instance in which laughter upended a very important audition on a 2021 episode of the YouTube series Hot Ones. While doing his best to endure a variety of scalding hot sauces, Holland recalled that his audition to play Finn in Star Wars The Force Awakens was ruined by his scene partner, who was voicing a droid. Holland explained, I just remember thinking there's no way this lady's going to read the robot's lines opposite me because that would be ridiculous. But she did read those lines, and Holland couldn't get over it. He added, This lady, bless her, would sit there with full commitment and was like, Bee boop, bee boop. As a result, Holland couldn't take the audition seriously. He got a case of the giggles and just couldn't stop laughing. While he didn't end up joining the Star Wars franchise, Holland did land the coveted role of Spider-Man, which is maybe the greatest consolation prize ever.